The new project is to make a box or an enclosure, a clamshell or a drop spine box for a book that requires protection. The steps in making the enclosure start with making a box or a tray to fit the size of the book, then a second tray that fits snugly over the first, then we cover the walls of the two trays and then fill in the bases of the trays, make a case like in a case binding and then fit the trays to the case. The first step to making the tray is to measure the dimensions of the book. Now I'm using 2mm grey board. I want the grain direction of the grey, grey board to go in the direction, the longest direction of the enclosure. And the book is not quite square, so I need to go around and carefully work out what the largest dimensions are. I'll need the height, uh, the width and the thickness. And I'm using uh, that piece of board at the back and a piece of board at the front to sort of average out the, any bumps in the book. When measuring the thickness of the book, I'm going to measure to the top of the piece of board that I put on top of it so that I've got the thickness of the book and the thickness of the grey board. And that's because the walls will be butted up against the base and not stacked on top. I'm going to use a material called crash canvas to cover the boxes. It's about 0.3 of a millimetre thick. So I'm going to compensate for the thickness of the material by adding 2 millimetres to the long dimensions and 1 millimetre to the thickness. I would ideally want the slightest bit of pressure on the book when it's closed. Not on lengthwise or widthwise, but just closing it like it's on a bookshelf. So I start by straightening and truing up, squaring up a corner and then I'll cut out the baseboard. I almost forgot the width needs uh, the thickness of the board added to it. In the final clamshell box there's a piece in the spine that will go up and complete the uh, enclosure. So we need to add for that. So that's uh, two millimeters or you can use the actual board to add that thickness. You can see I was just uh, demonstrating that piece there. Now I'll cut the walls so that's 37 millimeters. I think I'll get away with two pieces for the three walls. The side walls I will make the exact same width as the base and then the long wall will be the length of the base plus two widths of board which is the two side pieces. So I'm going to attach the boards to the sides instead of stacking them on top. Here I'm adding the width of the two side pieces to the length of the wall for the long edge. There are many different designs for clamshell boxes and then there's many different ways to construct those different designs. I'm going to use that technique of doing a double wall for the base uh, which I was taught by my original bookbinding teacher. So I'm going to use some 12 point or 0.3 millimeter manila card stock to laminate the baseboard to, which just makes easier makes it easier to attach the side walls. Now I'll attach the walls. I'll attach the ends first and then the long edge. I'll put adhesive on the edge and then a bead that will abut up against the baseboards. Now I was originally taught uh, boxes by John Tonkin in Canberra many, many years ago. And the design that I use has evolved so much since then and I've lost his notes that I don't know how similar to, they are to his original 
a design or what he taught me. I did recently review Sage Reynolds' videos on this, and he's got some excellent videos on making a clamshell box if you want to get a second opinion on this. And uh, I have picked up a, a few hints from him and put them into this. I can't think of exactly what right at the moment, but when I do them, I might try and point them out. It is very common not to have that card stock and to build the walls up on top of the base. So you would, the height of the walls would just be the height of the book in that case. There isn't a right or wrong way to make these enclosures. There's just what you think is your preferred way of doing it from your experience. So you just have to make uh, some boxes, some different ways and see what techniques that you like. I really like the double layered base and I really like having that piece in the spine that closes the small box when the enclosure is closed. Once the glue has set, it's just a matter of trimming the manila card flush with the edges of the box. And now's a good time to check with the book that you haven't made any major mistakes with your measurements. So time to make the second tray. I add two millimeters to the length of this and only one millimeter to the width. Uh, if you're a bit nervous about your cutting, maybe add two millimeters. And again, one millimeter to the height for the walls as well. Now it is very common to line these boxes with a thick material like felt. And if you do that, then you obviously have to add the thickness of those materials to the measurements. Before we cover the edges of the boxes, it's a good time to uh, smooth out any bumps, uh, lumps of glue, uh, little bits of board sticking out.
to cover the walls of the boxes or trays, I'm going to just cut two pieces of material the same size. So I'll size it to the large box. So I want it to wrap around the three sides of the box plus 30 millimeters at each end. So uh, add 60 millimeters to that dimension and it should be two and a half times the thickness of the boxes. So I'll cut two pieces of material the same size. Uh, the one will be slightly larger than necessary for the small box, but that's fine. Once I've cut the two strips of cloth, I'll also draw a line down the center of them and mark the center lengthways position. So I'll glue out the long wall of the boxes and then I will pitch the open side to the line at the center. Then I'll trim the cloth away from the corners out to the edges of the cloth and then turn in and glue down the side pieces as well. I'll go ahead and do that for the two boxes. The trickiest part of this project is turning the cloth in over the walls. We're going to cut a tiny strip of cloth that will cover the corner so that the grey board won't poke through. So I'll do a cut that's parallel to the edge of the board and then move over one board thickness and cut again and then cut away the corner. The first turn in we'll do is for the base. So to allow that to occur, we'll cut away from the corner parallel to the base. Now I'll quickly repeat that on the other side before turning in the base. Now if you wonder what happens if you trim that little thin tab of cloth off, I do do it in the second box. So if you want to see how I recover from that, uh, watch the second trail box. Now we'll turn in the cloth on the base. Bricks are really handy in box making. So I'm going to mitre that corner, so I'll just overlap them, fold them over, and then use a knife 
to trim them out and remove the overlapping material. I'll do that at the other corner and then just go around and glue down the turn ends. Now we'll do the larger tray or box and in a moment you'll see me make my little mistake. I'll somehow manage to trim off the little tab of cloth and I recover the situation by just gluing it down over the corner of the box. There may be a slight bump uh, on the foredge but it'll hardly be noticeable. Now we'll turn in the tabs at the front of the boxes. Now to do that we need to remove a little bit of material for the thickness of the boards. But we also want a little mitre at the uh, edge of the board. So to do that mitre we'll uh, fold them in so that they're overlapping and then just cut through with our knife and then we'll come back and then cut off the width of the boards. Fold the tabs over each other in their final positions and then with a bit of light pressure with your knife cut diagonally from the corner and hopefully it'll only cut through what is supported by the board underneath. Now trim out from the edge of that mitre cut, the width of the board. Now obviously one of these little triangles is almost essential uh, for making this box. Now a lot of people say that you can't cut along a plastic edge. I've never had a problem with one of these little triangles. You can buy super expensive metal edged triangles um, and I've bought one and I hardly ever use it. And these little plastic triangles are so cheap that if I ever did cut into one then I'd just buy a replacement. Where these two pieces of cloth meet on the inside of the box 
is going to get covered later by the cloth coming down the inside of the wall. But that's not the case for the inside corner at the, the back of the box. And we'll treat that slightly differently, as you'll see. I use my 20 millimeter turn in gauge just to trim everything off to a manageable length. And then we glue these out and turn them in. One of the things that I picked up from Sage Reynolds videos was cutting those little mitres uh, by folding them over each other and cutting through them with the knife. Uh, in the past, I'd always cut those with my uh, triangle. If you haven't already watched his videos in the past, then I highly recommend that you do to get a second opinion on how to make this enclosure. He also does some other interesting things. He's, uh, he loves using a roller to apply adhesive. Now, a roller seems a great idea to me, and I have tried using them in the past but I have a couple of problems with it. Uh, the main one is that uh, in the past, my day job will often mean that I'll travel for a week or two, and normally when I get back, that roller's gone rock solid, and I've wasted a, a roller and a heap of adhesive. Uh, in theory, I think it's a fantastic idea and probably better than using a brush, but just in practice, it's just never really taken for me. But uh, if you watch Sage use a roller, you'll probably think that it's a great idea and I highly recommend giving it a go. Uh, another well-known and accomplished bookbinder that uses a roller, I think is Mark Cockrum. Um, I think he loves using a roller. Uh, so it's uh, definitely a, a, a good idea and something worth doing, uh, and if it works for you, you'll probably save a heap of time and get a more uniform layer of adhesive. Okay, now we do these turn-ins for the inside of the box. So we're doing the same thing. We're mitering at the corners, but and we'll trim away the uh, width of the board on the back piece, on the long edge, but we're not going to do that on the side pieces. Instead, we're going to trim out a tiny little triangle because we want that piece of cloth to wrap around the inside edge of the board. It's much clearer in the second one that I do. Clearly, with this technique, you do overcut the mitres slightly. Uh, with the cloth underneath it, it's completely invisible. It won't be noticeable. So turn in the sides first. Now, the other thing that w Sage will convince you of is that the Teflon square-edged bone folders are fantastic, and they are fantastic for a lot of jobs. And this is one of them, and I'll swap to my Teflon folder for this as well. But for most jobs, I do like the harder, pointier bone bone folder. Now we want to do another mitre on these inside corners. We don't want overlapping cloth, and we'll use the triangle for that. And it's a bit tricky because it'll hang on with some uh, a bit of thread, 
and uh, a pair of tweezers helps if you've got really big thick fingers like I have. And you'll also notice how taking that little notch out instead of trimming off the width of the board has meant there's a piece of cloth that wraps around the inside corner of the box. When we turn in the long edge, the back edge, that will overlap so there's no chance that you'll see the grey gray board through that corner. Now it's a simple matter of turning in the long edge cloth, uh, doing the inside mitres at the corners again, and then repeat for the second box. I had hoped to be further along today, but we are up to the 30 minute mark and I am trying to hold my videos to 30 minutes or about at maximum. So next week we'll finish the boxes by filling in the bases and then making the case and then putting it all together. As always, I really appreciate the positive feedback through you hitting the big thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified of my future videos, like the second part of this project, uh, please hit the subscribe button. I hope everyone's taking care. Until next time, cheerio.